media personal computer. It's like a normal personal computer, except that the capability to make sounds and a CD-ROM reader has been added. So what we're doing is putting in normal CD disks that are the same as you use in an audio application. Now, buying a multimedia PC is only one way to get at these capabilities. You can also buy add-ons for normal PCs to provide those extensions, bringing it up to the level of the multimedia PC. The encyclopedia is a good example of how you'd use this in business. Let's look at one other example, which is more appropriate for education. Do we have our Beethoven disc? Yes, we do, Bill. I'll go ahead and put it in the PC and load it up. This application was created by a music professor, Robert Winner, who wanted to teach the student about Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. He's made it very interesting by including all the different elements that multimedia is capable of. We can start out by clicking on the pocket guide. And this shows that the symphony is divided into four movements. And it makes it easy to select in and, and listen to any of the different parts so we can compare them. For example, we can click on the joy theme that's late in the fourth movement. Another part of this is called a close listening. It lets you go and learn about instruments and music at the time of the Ninth Symphony. Let's go to the page that talks about the woodwinds. It has an example here where we can hear the sound of an oboe. Another section takes interesting parts of the music and describes for you the musical technique that Beethoven is using to make it particularly impactful. The section we move to here talks about the use of dotted rhythms in Beethoven's Defiance theme. So we can click and listen and even see in the score the different notes that are being played. This piece takes the Ninth Symphony and makes it fun, makes it approachable for the student. Now, multimedia is just one of the ways that we're extending windows. Another important extension we're making is taking windows and making it work better with networks. We're finding more and more of our users want their Windows machines to sit on the network and allow them to get out to the world of information. Here at Microsoft, all of our Windows PCs are connected to a worldwide network. This brings together our 40 different United States locations, as well as our 24 locations outside the US. It's over 14,000 different PCs connected and using applications that help us run our business. At headquarters, we use a 100 megabyte fiber backbone and we connect the rest of the world using leased lines. One of the important applications we run on this network is called Worldwide Sales. It gives people an instant look at how our sales are doing compared to forecast. I'd like to show that application to you. Before we had this application, we distributed our, our sales data, like a lot of companies do, on paper. So people always received uh, information they weren't interested in, and they didn't get the detail that might be particularly relevant to them. Now we've eliminated the use of that paper reporting altogether. There's simply an icon sitting right here on your desktop that you just point to and click whenever you're interested in this worldwide sales data. Now we have this hooked up with security, so only the people who should have access to the right parts of the database can get at it. So the first thing I do to get connected is type in my, my password. 
Then what it's doing is going out to the server that holds this information in our network. It gives me a choice of exactly what data I want to pull up. So let's say I want to see all the sales data for this particular month. It's using the network, sending out a query, and now we can see the results uh, for every one of these business units. Whenever you want to dive down and see detail, it's simply a matter of pointing and clicking. So let's take the applications group here, point to that, and drill down to see the more detailed information. Very quickly, we see now the results by business unit. And we can see a couple of the business units are doing very well compared to plan, and a couple are not on plan. Now, if I want to see this data in different forms, I can simply take it and use Windows Clipboard and copy all the information into that. So then I can switch over and use the Excel spreadsheet. And as soon as I paste this data in, it's available to format in any way that I'd like. For example, I can take part of this data and simply hit a key and then see a chart that lets me see the underlying trends in that data. So now we've eliminated the printed reports and given people incredibly more flexibility over how they want to look at this data. Microsoft has 18 different applications we use now that take advantage of the network to help us run our business more efficiently. These include things like expense tracking or keeping track of our product development schedules. So all I have to do is go in and click an icon to see exactly where everything stands. Even the bug database is tracked using the large network. Now the worldwide sales application only required PCs. The PC on the desktop and a large PC running our SQL server back end with all of the, the sales information. But a number of these applications tie into the different types of computers on the network. For example, our overseas subsidiaries all have AS400s that are used for order entry and invoicing. And the, many of the applications tie Excel as a front end as a window onto that AS400 data. We also have a number of deck vaxes we use here at headquarters for our accounting information. So it's a heterogeneous network, but the end user only has to know Windows and be able to point and click to take full advantage of these applications. In fact, there are a total of over 500 different servers connected to this network. Here we are in the computer room that holds all of our server machines. Here we see the PC server machines of which we have over 500. These machines are based on the 386 and the 486 and they have up to 20 gigabytes of storage. Now the software we run on these machines includes our LAN manager and our mail server as well as the SQL database product. Today, we've been running most of these machines under the OS2 operating system. But we're preparing a new product, our Windows NT product, that's even more advanced that we'll be using on these machines in the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Windows NT product. I have it running in its early form on this machine here. Windows NT stands for Windows New Technology, and it's a major advance in the power of Windows. It also represents our approach to doing more powerful software, which is to maintain compatibility. You could call this the evolutionary approach. Instead of revolutionizing things and forcing people to give up the investments they've made in learning and applications, we simply improve what's there with compatibility. So Windows NT runs all the same DOS and Windows applications that have been built in the past while providing extra power. We can see that NT provides exactly the same appearance as Windows 3.1. We're starting out here with the program manager in the back, which is, of course, the same. And we also have the file manager 